All right, what is up guys? So we're back at it checking out a bunch of new Yu-Gi-Oh cards. If you guys haven't seen part one, man, the Troy Mares are looking really good. There might be one of the best Link decks uh, in the future. I mean, they got some pretty good effects, but for those of you guys that already watched part one, let's continue on checking out a bunch of these new cards. Next up, we got Cybersal Cyclone. Uh, quick play spell cards just target one Link monster. The opponent controls banish a monster from your graveyard with the same number of link arrows, and if you do, destroy the target monster. Also, if you banish a monster whose original type was Cybers, you can destroy one face-up card in the opponent's spell and trap zone. That's actually a pretty good effect. However, I feel like it's very conditional. It would be a very, very good uh, side deck card if you know exactly what your opponent is playing. Not not necessarily like you got to be playing Cybers, but... As a quick play, just to be like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of your monster. There's a lot of decks that can just go straight up for a bunch of Link summons. So this card can definitely see some play in the side deck. Um, however, in the main deck, it depends on what the meta seems to be. Because, you know, obviously, it's a great card if the format becomes, like, I don't know, uh, the uh, the new Link decks. I think that this card is very viable. Uh, very good. You don't even have to, like, there's no real downside other than, like, it's summoning because, or, like, the, it's activation requirement. It's not like you have to go, like, minus life points. Next up, we have uh, Yashiki Orishi. Um, so, it's a level 3 Earth Zombie Tuner with 0 attack, 1800 defense, and it says you can only use this card's name once per turn. The first effect says during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that includes any of these effects. Oh, gosh, dude. Is this another one of those hand traps? Adds a card from the graveyard, hand, deck, or extra deck. Special summons from the graveyard, banish a card from the graveyard. Wow, that's insane. Oh, dude, we just got another hand trap. We ran three copies of it. Okay, so it looks like the rarity in the OSG. It looks like, just via the picture, it looks like it's going to be super rare. What does that mean for the TCG? You already know. $100 secret rare, $70 secret rare. Calling it right now. Oh, gosh. It's a good card, though. Um... What card? Any of these effects? Like, dude, like, why do they give the cards like 15 different effects? Effect video is like, oh, negate, like, you know, just the effect of one mod. This is like, oh, you want to add from the hand deck, extra deck, spell sum from great. It's like, dude, you just give the, like, the power creep is real with the hand traps. All right. Uh, next up, we got the Alter Geist. Uh, this is the Alter Geist Pixel, level one wind spellcaster, 100, 100. Uh, you can only use the first effect with this card's name once per turn. So the first effect says you can contribute this card to activate three cards. For decking, if you do, add one Altergeist uh, card among them, send any of the rain cards to the graveyard deck. Okay. Um, if it was a spell or a trap, it'd be much better. <laughs> and you have to tribute it? Oh, okay. Anyways, next up we got the tri Oh, Trickstars get more support? Dude, they, they, it's like the new Black Wings. You just keep on giving them support, man. Trickstar and Bokeh. Uh, so, a uh, quick play spell card that says you can only activate one card with the same per turn. Target a Trickstar monster you control and one face up monster on the field. Turn that Trickstar monster to the hand. If you do, the other targeted monster gains attack equal to the original attack of the monster that returned to the hand until the end of this turn. Um, so I guess you could do it to your opponent? I, I mean, you could, y'all, dude, you know be really funny. <laughs> Right, because it just says one face-up monster, you return the trick star, and the other monster gains attack. You'd know, be really funny, guys, is to beef up the attack of, like, one card, and then when they, your opponent attacks into you, you magic slow into them, and like, all oh, the joke's on you. Dude, yeah, you know, I, I would love to do that. <laughs> okay, uh, anyways, dude, we still, okay, so this is the trick star, uh, Defendium, Defendium. Uh, 2200 attack links are up, bottom, left, bottom, right. Materials are two or more Trickstar monsters. If there are Trickstar monsters linked to this card, when this card declares an attack, you can target a banished number of... You can target... Target banished a number of your banished Trickstar cards up to the number of leaked monsters the opponent controls. Add them to your hand. If you do, it gains a thousand attack until the end of the turn for each card added to the hand by this effect. Interesting card. Um... Next up, we have Altergeist uh, uh, Emu Emuliff. Uh, continuous trap card that says, Spell summon this card as an effect monster. So, trap monsters are back, I guess. Um, Spellcaster at level 4, 1400 attack, 1800 defense. This card is still a trap card. Uh, when you control this card that was special summoned by its own effect, Altergeist trap cards you control except for this card cannot be targeted, destroyed by card effects. Okay. Next up, we have Watch Cat. Um, anyway, zero attack, 1800 defense points. It says you can only use each effect of this card's name, 
uh, card effects once per turn. I control the monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. During the end phase of the turn in which this card was special summoned, you can banish this card you control to set one continuous spell card from your deck in your spell and trap zone. Um, interesting, I mean, as far as I know, you can one for one it. Uh, you can get, get that gateway, man. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, dang. Um, it is during the end phase. I'm trying to think of what, what deck really needs. Um, is, is Shard of Greed during your opponent's standby phases? I don't know. I don't think people would run that. I think most cards are too slow. Then are continuous. I don't know. So, wait, Swords of Greed isn't even continuous, is it? I know it has, like, it lasts, like, three turns, but what would we use this in? I don't know. Maybe we'll get into it by scrolling down. Let's go and check it out. So, we got new Dark Lord support. Oh, that's cool. Um, anyways, normal trap card, uh, it's called Dark Lord Divinity. Uh, you can only use this card's name first effect once per turn. The, the first effect uh, reads, You can send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up from your side of the field to the graveyard to negate the effects of one monster on the field until the end of the turn. Also, you gain life points equal to its attack. That's not too bad. Uh, next up, we have Link uh, Streamer. So, it's a level 4 light cyber, 1600 attack, 1800 defense. You can only use the effect of this card's name, cards, card with this name once per turn. When a cyber monster is normal or special, uh, while you already control this card, you can special on one data token. Okay, so it's just used for, I guess, stepping stones for links. Uh, next up, we got the Prompt Horn, uh, level 1 Dark Cybers, 200 uh, attack, 400 defense points. You can only use the effect of this card's name once per turn. You can tribute one level 4 lower cyber monster, special summon any number of cyber monsters from your deck or graveyard who's... Uh, total levels equals the level of the tributed monster, but they are banished during the end phase. Uh, now, unfortunately, it has to be level 4. Or lower. If only it just didn't have a restriction, I would just say just make... There is a card that just counts any monster as a cybers monster, but it's not like... Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, you can't just go for whatever at that point. Uh, next up, we have uh, Transfamiliar. Uh, it's level 1 psychic uh with zero zero it says one turning target one monster you control move that monster you control to another of your main monsters it's like sign at switch but like some monster like if it was a like a hand trap maybe i just don't I think it's that great maybe sometimes we have to read further into the cards there might be another card that supports it anyways we have designator from the grave We'll play spell cards just target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. Until the end of the next turn, that monster and monsters with the same name as that monster have their effects negated. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, soul release is like target like multiple monsters and you'd have to set this like ahead of time, knowing that they're going to be making a play. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I... I don't know what 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 deck would like really need something. I mean, there. I mean, you could just run like DD Crow. You know what I mean? Like, I know it, it stops until the end of the next turn, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. You guys, let me know your thoughts on that. I just think DD Crow is just overall better. It's another monster. Uh, but anyways, uh, Alter Geist uh, Multi Faker, uh, a level three Dark Spellcaster, 1200, 800. Uh, you can only use this card's name first and second effects. Uh, once per turn each. The first effect says, if you activate a trap card, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, if this card is special summoned, you get to special one all three monster from your deck and face up to defense vision except for itself. During the turn you activate this effect, you cannot special summon monsters except for all three monsters. Okay. Next up we have uh, World Legacy End or the end of the World Legacy Leads to. Anyways, continuous spell card says you can only control one World Legacy End once per turn if a face of living monster you control leaves the field by your opponent's card effect, or by being destroyed by battle, you can special one world legacy monster from your hand or deck in defense version. Not bad for that archetype. Uh, next up, we have, uh, is it Degren? Is it Degrenade? Degrenade Buster? Uh, level 7 Fire Cybers effect monster, 25 25. Cannot be a normal summoner set, must be first special summon from your hand by managing two Cybers monsters. From your graveyard, you can only activate the effect of a card with this name once per turn. During either player's turn, you target one monster the opponent controls with attack higher than this card's attack and banish it until the end phase. It's got 2500 attack. That's not a bad effect at all. Now, unfortunately, you have to be running Cybers. 
Um, I don't, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any OCG decks that even have topped this since, you know, they technically have, like, more of the cybers, like, cards at their disposal. I just think that maybe the archetype is eventually going to be getting good. I don't know. Um, you guys can let me know your thoughts. Like I said, I haven't even seen that many people just, like, running, like, cyber decks, um, in general. Next up, we have Stare Down. A continuous spell cut says, when you spell someone a monster to an extra monster zone, you can target one monster in a main monster zone on your opponent's side of the field. Move that opponent's monster to a main monster zone on their side of the field. In the same column as your monster in the extra monster zone. Um, which would be great for the, the actual condition security dragon, that kind of stuff. But anyways, second effect says, when your opponent spells summons a monster uh, to a extra monster, and you can target one monster in a main monster zone on your side of the field, move that monster to a main monster zone on your side of the field in the same column as your opponent's monster in the extra monster zone. Wow, that's going to be very confusing for some like some people, but I don't know if people even play it, so is it really that relevant? I don't know. I mean, the first fight is kind of nice, which lets you just, um, when you spell summon one, you can target one of them and just put it like right next to it and then just bounce it right back. That's actually an okay card. I mean, it's continuous. Well, um, yeah. Maybe some people will try it. I, I don't know, though. I, I think it might not see any play. Uh, but there is a chance. I don't know. You guys let me know your thoughts on that one. Next up, we have Miniature Monk uh, Heated Rumor. So it's a Link to Fire Beast uh, effect monster. 15 or attack Link zones are bottom left and bottom right. This matures a 2 Beast, Beast Warrior, and or Wing Beast monster. So glad you're Beast. Maybe they couldn't use this card. Anyways, it gains a hunter attack for each beast, beast warrior, and wing beast monster on the field. Uh, once per turn, you get to target one spell and trap card on each player's side of the field. Destroy it. Third effect says, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you get to target one of your beast, beast warrior, or wing beast monsters in your graveyard that is banished and add it to your hand. Don't know what that's really like used for. Maybe we'll get into it. Next up, we have Outroll of the Haunted Sea, level 3. Beast Warrior Tuner Effect, uh, 100 attack, 1300 defense points. It says you can only use each of this card's name's effects once per turn, and you can only spell someone one of uh, the uh, you can only spell someone one Beast Warrior monsters during the turn in which you activate their effect. The first effect says if this card is normal or special, you can target one Beast Warrior monster in your graveyard. The attribute and level of this card become the same as that monster until the end of this turn. The second effect says, during your main phase, you can activate this effect. Spell someone one Beast Warrior monster in your hand with the same attribute and level of this card. Huh, okay. That's interesting. I don't know. Is this supposed to be an archetype? archetype? I don't know. Uh, next up, we have the, um, is that Yaji, Yaji Rovader? Uh, anyways, well, yeah, that, that artwork looks like you're going to get demonetized. Anyways, level 5 insect effect monster. Uh, 2200 attack says, if this card is no more special in a monster zone, other than the middle one, destroy it. Okay. Uh, second effect says, once per turn, you can move this card to an adjacent main monster zone that is not occupied. Each time the opponent uh, no more or special summons exactly one monster, if that monster is in a different column when that when this effect resolves, move this card to the closest main monster zone in, uh, to that column, destroy all, all their cards in the same column as this card. Interesting card, definitely, but uh, again, some of these obscure cards, I don't know if people will be playing. Uh, next up, we have Light of Sekka. Oh, is it Denko Sekka? Wow. Uh, it looks like it's Denko Sekka in the artwork. Anyways, small card that says you can only use the first and second effects of this card once per turn. Why not just, you can only have one per turn? I don't know. Anyways, first effect says, if you have no spell and trap cards in your graveyard, draw two cards. Wow. After activating this card, you can't actually spell trap cards or effects for the rest of the duel. What, except for Light of Sekka? What is this new archetype? I like this. I like I, things like Infernities where it's like, you have no card. Dude, this is crazy. What the heck is this? Second effect says you could banish this card from your graveyard, reveal one monster in your hand. If you do, return it to the deck and shuffle it, and then draw one card. Dude, this card is insane. Oh. Um, dang. You can no spell and traps for the rest of the duel except for... Oh my gosh. Hold on, guys. Hold on. This card is, like, game-breaking. Um, is there any way... I'm pretty sure there... Isn't there a card that lets you set something to your opponent's side? I know you can... Uh, is it, like, exchange where you give your opponent the card? And then I think... Is it Dark Designator? I don't know. There's a card that, um, like... 
either force your opponent to add to their hand or activate it. I don't know. But, like, if you can give this to your opponent and activate a card, like, there's a card called Bait Doll. I mean, you'd have to do this turn one. But could you guys imagine shutting down your opponent and making it so they cannot use any spell trap cards for the rest of the duel? It's not even, like, for the rest of the turn. It's just for the rest of the duel. That is so crazy. Oh, my gosh. Okay, guys, we got to figure out how... how with the combo, like I said, I, I know that there there are cards that you give it to your opponent's hand. There's the one that just sets it to your opponent, because if I could just force it to be set to your opponent, and then just be like, okay, bait doll, okay, you have to use it. I, dude, I, I would make a cheesy deck with that. That looks super, super fun. Anyways, uh, is there more to this, like, this second deck? That's so cool. Anyways, next up we have Ruthless Drop-Off. It's a counter drop card that says, uh, when a face-up card on the field or a card in the graveyard is added to the opponent's hand by a card effect, Look at your opponent's hand. If you do manage the card that was added to the hand and all cards with the same name. Um, okay. Uh, bounce backs on those circuits are pretty easy to use, but I I don't know. Uh, next up, we have Poking the Serpent's Nest. Uh, normal track card says, if this set card in the field is sent to the graveyard or banished by an opponent's effect, spell on one monster from your deck or extra deck. What? Oh, wow, dude, that is so, so prank. Oh my gosh. It, there's like no restrictions on this thing. This is insane. What? I mean, obviously your opponent has to get rid of it. And you just have to send it and just like, oh, dude, let me just get out like a, a, just, like almost any monster. I mean, obviously there's some monsters where it has to be supposed to something like, a certain way, but like, you just get out like a, anything. Like, you just, oh my gosh. Um. Oh, can you just go for some like the the fiends, right? Um, I forgot. It's been a while since I've seen this. Um, oh, wait, vanity. You could spell. Can this card not be? Oh, cannot be spelled for someone. Okay. Uh, what about vanities? Uh, is it, can you? Can, this card cannot be spelled. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the card I was actually looking. At. I, I I think I remember vanities fiend couldn't be spelled for someone. But I was like, wait, what about vanity ruler? Um, what about uh, uh majesty's fiend? Can it be spelled? For, oh, cannot be spelled for someone either. Oh, okay. I don't know. I feel like this card is crazy. Like, there's so many, like, options. Options, guys. <laughs> Alright, next up we have, uh, Mami Maki. Uh, it's a normal trap card. Just target one face up monster the opponent controls. This card a number of cards in your hand equal to the level of that monster. And if you do, draw that many cards from your deck, then return the target of monster to the owner's hand. Hmm. Wow, this card opens up the door for a lot of... Um... Because it's discard, not send to the grave. I, there could be a lot of uses with it. Can't you do that with Fables? Because... Dude, this card could be insane in, like, in a lot of different decks. Just to cycle through a bunch of th stuff. Um... That, that has a lot of potential. Um for just some random decks, some more cheesy stuff than anything, but I think it's cool. Uh, next up we have a Boy Cotton, so it's a level 4 Earth Plant. That, that doesn't look like a plant, that's like a beast! Anyways, a 100 attack, 2500 defense points, and it says, uh, you take battle damage that the opponent takes from battles involving this card. The second effect says, if this card is not destroyed by battle and you took the battle damage in that battle, return this card to the hand. Okay. Um, what? Why would you want to bounce this card back? <laughs> what? I, I think I think it's because it has like a lot of defense points. I, I it just doesn't. I don't know. Next up we have. Is this an archetype? Like these little like cute uh, kawaii animals. Anyways, we have rapid red, rapid red haired mare. Wow, it's kind of hard to say. Tongue twister over there. So it's a level five wind beast effect monster. Two thousand tech, eighteen hundred defense points. Its first effect says you can spell summon this card from your hand in a column that has no cards in it. You can only spell summon a card with this name uh, by this method once per turn. And it says as a second effect, if a card is placed in the same column as this card, destroy this card. Third effect says once per turn you can activate this effect until the end of this turn. Half this card's original attack, and if you do, it can attack your opponent directly. Oh, okay. Um, interesting card. Uh, can let you kind of push for some extra damage and then like link into something? I don't know. Um, it's not terrible. It's just like another like two thousand. Um, obviously, it, it could be like destroyed pretty easy, but it could be definitely used in OTK decks. Uh, next, up, sponsored reborn. Wow, this is another monster reborn. Normal spell cards target three monsters in your graveyard. Your opponent chooses one of the monsters for you to spell summon. 
and you banish the remaining monsters. You can only activate a card with this name once per turn. Oh, wow, that's actually really good. Yo, did they add this? Spon Dude, I'm gonna make a sponsored life sworn deck. Dude, a spo sponsored life sworns? <laughs> sponsored reborn life sworns, because that is insane. Um, yeah, you have to banish the other life sworns, but if I pick like Lumina, Raiden, and another card that like sends cards to the graveyard, it's, like the fact that I'm banishing two monsters is irrelevant because I get to send extra monsters, and that lets me potentially just extend some of my combos even further. Um, this is a really insane card. There's no no downside, so other than like you banish, dude. This card is great. Anyways, I got a lot of ideas uh, to make some just a lot of different decks, dude. I really want to figure out that 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 Denko Seka one though. Someone help me with that. I'm I'm gonna get it. If you guys got any cool replays or combos, please send me in the YRP files, and I'll have it featured. I'll give you a shout out on the channel. Uh, I got I got ideas. Like I got so many ideas. Okay, if you guys aren't following me on Twitch, link down below in the description box. Uh, this weekend we will definitely be checking out. Um, some of these, like, dude, this list, there's so many, like, ideas that I have, like, later this week that I, I definitely want to do. I still need to, like, make my hero deck. I still need to do a lot of things, but, dude, the, 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 the negative 3,000 attack one, which, if you guys haven't seen part one of the video, I'll link it down below also, uh, because this is part two of, like, a bunch of new Yu-Gi-Oh cards from the new set. And uh, a lot of stuff is looking pretty fun. Some of the other stuff is just really strange. Let me know, guys, uh, if you guys got any cool combos. Or, like I said, better yet, send me in some replays of these cool cards. Hopefully, they're added. Uh, actually, did, let's, let's just check real quick. Do we have... Hold on. Uh, more importantly, we need that sponsored... Uh, not, it's not out yet. No, no, no sponsored or reborn yet. <laughs> okay. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the vid. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button for more fresh Yu-Gi-Oh! content.